British Muslims, uh, uh, about 60% of them live below the poverty line. Yeah. So it's, it's very hard. Yeah. However, this may well be close. It sounds like my estimates are in the right region. So the final step of my mission is to uncover the Islamic income worldwide. Well, if I'm going to get an accurate global income for Islam, I need global information. So I've got a list of the countries with the highest Muslim populations, and I'm going to try my luck at their embassies. Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia. Excellent. Indonesia has the world's largest Muslim population, over 200 million followers. I've estimated the country's Islamic income at £7.95 billion, which hopefully the High Commission will confirm. Well, that's very difficult. I mean, I'm not a complete idiot. I did actually book an appointment to speak to someone from the Indonesian embassy, and he's not here. He's at a meeting outside the building. Not really a very good start, is it? I came back to London as I thought getting answers would be easy, but it's just more closed doors. I don't think I'm going to find out anything today. So is the financial information top secret? Dr Masood Abano is an expert on Pakistan's economics. Maybe she can explain why the embassies won't discuss the income and assets of Islam. One of the places I've been to recently is the Pakistani embassy, to see if they would tell me. They wouldn't. No, they won't have it. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that's the main thing, is that the, the, quite simply the figures don't exist. They don't exist. Knows, and, uh... Uh, see, what I can uh, say to this is that um, uh, that's the basic problem. It's not that people are necessarily hiding it no. or governments are hiding it. Um, it's just that if, if you even ask me about the num total number of mosques in Pakistan, even in terms of the figures right, of, just... the, of these entities, uh, we won't have an absolute really? number. Right. Uh, even the government won't have it. It's the same story all over. I could be right simply because there aren't any other figures to consider. Well, my six days are up. I was welcomed in Canterbury, rejected in Rome, bewildered in Israel, and stood up in London. It's time to crunch my best estimates together and see what I've got. So I've asked lots of experts and institutions to look at these figures and they've pretty much all said I'm mad and my assumptions could be way off. But the point is, none of them could come up with anything better. So, here goes. Who's got God's millions? First, the domestic results. Judaism has the lowest estimated income and assets, followed by Catholicism, then Islam, meaning the richest domestic religion is easily the Church of England. So Britain's oldest formal religion, Catholicism, that 700 years ago owned a quarter of the entire country, is now poorer than at least two other religions in England and Wales. But will that be the same worldwide? I didn't get anywhere with global assets, but we know the annual Anglican income is £5 billion, and my estimate for Judaism worldwide was £21.6 billion. But it doesn't end there. I've used the same methodology on the remaining faiths, so my incredibly rough and unsubstantiated calculations give an annual global income to Catholicism of £51.8 billion, making Islam the richest religion of the four with £54.6 billion. Possibly. You know, I can't help thinking that a year ago, those religious assets and incomes would have seemed astronomical. I mean, back then, we didn't really know what a billion or two looked like. Well, now, of course, because of the famous credit crunch, we're all too well aware of it. A billion here, a billion there. I mean, what about £26 billion, which was the cost of taxpayers of bailing out Northern Rock? Or well, £390 billion, which is what the UK government threw at the rescue package for the financial system. And the financial firms around the world have lost in excess of £1.8 trillion. Pounds. I mean, what's a trillion pounds? How big is that? I've got no idea. So when you compare religious incomes with the amount of money that's being thrown about in the credit crunch, you know, the odd billion for a global faith really doesn't sound that outrageous. As an atheist, I never thought I'd hear myself say that.
think there's a real treat for Home and Away fans on Fiverr in a moment. The classic comebacks continue with Alf's 40th birthday and Summer Bay's flooded with faces from the past, including Celia and Blake and Sophie. And on 5 US, it's drama with numbers. While here on 5, we're on the road with the Ice Road Truckers and TJ's in real trouble.